Woman Fails Maternity Test. The reason why is beyond shocking. When Lydia Fairchild decided to separate from the father of her children, Jamie Townsend, she knew it would be the hardest thing she would ever have to face. In order to care for her family, she applied for government assistance. She didn't know it yet, but that would be the moment that her life would take a swift and brutal turn. That government application would challenge everything she thought she knew about herself and her children, and it wasn't going to be easy. In order to receive government assistance, Lydia and Jamie needed to take DNA tests in order to prove the children were, indeed, theirs. Fearing nothing, Lydia accepted the terms and sent the government lab her DNA sample. A few days later, Lydia and Jamie were ordered to go to a government office and were subjected to a deluge of harsh, mandatory questions. The government agent who Lydia and Jamie met with got straight to the point. Miss Fairchild, who is the biological mother of the two children currently living in your home? Lydia was shocked by the question. What do you mean, I am their biological mother? Miss Fairchild, I will not ask you again, the agent repeated curtly. Lydia Fairchild noticed that her hands started to shake as thoughts of her children's safety raced through her head. Tears started to run down Lydia's face and stain her blouse. She could not understand what she was hearing. She knew she was the mother of her children. She carried them for nine months. She gave birth to them. What could the agent possibly mean by this question? How can they not be her own? Could there possibly have been a mix-up at the hospital? Her head filled with questions she had no way to answer. Sadly, this was just the beginning of her ordeal. What about Jamie? My ex-boyfriend, isn't he the father of my babies? She asked the agent tearfully. Yes, Jamie Townsend is indeed the father of the children in question, he replied. Then how can it be? We were together for years, she insisted. The agent looked at her coldly. After a few moments, he said, let's run some more tests. Lydia and Jamie agreed to a series of DNA tests that all led to the same conclusion. Jamie was the father, but Lydia was not the mother. Newspapers and local news channels got word of the story and began to report about it. People were angry at Lydia, blaming her and Jamie for stealing and using the children in an attempt to receive monetary assistance from the government. Lydia's face was all over the internet and she didn't know how to handle it all. She thought she was on the brink of going crazy. And during this whirlwind, she discovered she was pregnant with baby number three. Please check me again. I'm pregnant and carrying Jamie's baby for the third time. Take your tests. Prove that I'm the mother, she pleaded with the government agent. As her world was turning into a living hell, Lydia knew she needed to fight for her children if she wanted to survive. A special DNA test was run on a sample of her unborn baby's DNA. The results came back and again showed the same unbelievable result. Jamie was the father, but she, again was somehow not the mother. How could that be? There must be something wrong with your tests. This baby is still inside me. How can it not be mine? She shouted at the government investigators. Lydia was living a mother's worst nightmare. At that moment, Lydia felt like she could not breathe. The newspaper started to spin her story as a crime, blaming her for kidnapping Jamie's children and trying to manipulate the government. Lydia realized this was getting out of hand, she felt helpless and unable to prove to the world the truth she knew deep down. She needed professional help, so she decided to hire a lawyer. Months passed and it was time for Lydia to give birth to her third child. The delivery room was filled with policemen, various doctors, and a special team that was ready to take a DNA sample the moment Lydia's baby was born. Before she was even allowed to see her newborn, the doctors took him away for a DNA sample. Lydia could not hide her tears. The DNA test came back negative. It showed that Lydia was not the baby's mother. Now everybody knew something was wrong here. The story did not add up. But was Lydia somehow to blame? Did she and Jamie harvest eggs from another woman and perform an illegal insemination? Or was it something else entirely? Fear started to take hold of Lydia. What would become of their children? What would happen if the government decided to take them from her? Would she ever be allowed to see them again? Lydia stopped eating and began closing herself off to others. She did not know how to handle this bizarre turn of events that just took hold of her life. During a conversation with her father, Lydia told him all about the results of the tests. 
but he was not convinced. Her father just could not believe Lydia's claim. He could see no fault in science. He believed the DNA test results. He asked her again and again, Lydia, I love you, but you've got to tell the truth. Did something happen? Did you get into trouble? I can't help you if you're not sincere with me. Lydia just kept crying and insisting that the babies were truly hers. There was no way she was not the biological mother of her children. She hung up the phone frustrated and took a deep breath. Then the phone rang again, and what she heard next was the ray of hope she needed in her life. Karen Keegan, a 52-year-old teacher, had read about Lydia's story in the newspaper. The details of Lydia's story were eerily similar. They resembled her own ordeal from just a few years back. Karen was diagnosed with a kidney disease and needed an urgent kidney transplant. Her oldest children were tested right away and, to the family's surprise, were found to not be a match because Karen was not their biological mother. Karen was shocked. What do you mean I'm not their biological mother? I gave birth to them with my husband standing beside me. The family decided to fight one battle at a time and focused on Karen's health. Once she got better, they could start finding out what's wrong with the DNA testing. A year has passed, but Karen's kidney showed signs of new complications. This time, she went to a different doctor who showed interest in the DNA mystery. After a conversation with the doctor, Karen decided to hire a scientific investigator to get to the bottom of the DNA anomaly. She knew her kids were hers and decided to uncover the truth once and for all. After the investigation reached a dead end, the investigator Karen hired reached out to his colleagues. They provided him with some unconventional theories. One of those colleagues gave the investigator an unusual lead. He suggested looking into the genetic likelihood that Karen was a chimera. But what is a chimera? Chimerism is a very rare condition where a person is born with not one but two sets of DNA, genomes. One genome can be found in one region of the body and comprising tissue of certain organs, and the other can be predominant in other organs, such as the sex organs. Thus, allowing for an individual to have a set of DNA passed to their children that is not the same as the DNA they would provide to be sampled during a DNA test. Most cases of human chimerism are caused by a twin pregnancy which, in the very early stages of development, causes the twins to fuse into a single baby. The phenomenon is called the vanishing twin syndrome. It occurs when one embryo can't survive and the second embryo absorbs it in utero. The remaining embryo now has twins' DNA, as well as its own, and the two are absorbed into different tissues and organs in the body. After further investigation, the doctors looked for a second set of DNA in her body. The shocking revelation came when the DNA testing showed that Karen's children were considered the descendants of her husband and her brother. The investigators were baffled by the results. How could her children have the DNA of Karen's brother? That was the question that ultimately led to Karen's official chimera diagnosis. The family was naturally amazed by this revelation and decided to keep researching the phenomenon, believing it would help other undiagnosed people who are considered chimera. Lydia's phone rang in her kitchen. On the other side was her lawyer, calling to let her know he heard of a similar case that was just discovered in Boston. The mother's name was Karen Keegan, and she went through the same ordeal as Lydia. The news of Karen's diagnosis left Lydia speechless. Is this the answer to it all? She asked herself. Would this diagnosis finally put to rest those terrible suspicions? She could only hope. Feeling a little bit optimistic, Lydia started to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but the ride wasn't over yet. The first trial Lydia had to go through was a blood test. The researchers looked at Lydia's red blood cells to see if her blood contains a chimera population of red cells. Sadly, the test result did not find chimera signs in Lydia's blood. However, the researchers had been down this road before and they knew they had to keep looking. The second test included tissue samples from Lydia's hair, skin, and internal organs. The testing process was time-consuming and far from over. It was dragging on and Lydia began to lose hope. The researchers told her that it could take years to definitively know if she was a chimera. Lydia knew she didn't have years to wait, as the court's ruling date was fast approaching. 
Lydia's day in court arrived. On that day, she would finally learn if the state would take her children away from her because they deemed her not their biological mother. Lydia's body felt tense, her palms were sweaty, and her head was filled with nightmare scenarios she could find her family in if the court ruled against her. Lydia's lawyer entered the courtroom with a stack of newly printed papers. Lydia asked him about them and he simply answered, this is your proof. Lydia's eyes quickly filled with tears. The stack of papers Lydia's lawyer brought with him to court contained the most up-to-date tests the researchers had performed on Lydia's DNA samples. The result was conclusive. Lydia's children shared DNA with her mother, their grandmother. That meant that the chimera diagnosis made Lydia's DNA the only missing link in connecting her biological children to their mother. Having shared DNA of Lydia's family member and their biological dad clearly proved Lydia to be both their biological mother and a chimera. Lydia's smile shined brightly for the first time in a year and she looked at her kids lovingly with tears in her eyes. This was the moment she'd been waiting for, for so long, the official proof that she was their mother. In the final ruling, the judge admitted to Lydia that they indeed made a mistake. One they could never take back, but now she could finally take her kids home and be assured that the nightmare was finally over.